Okay, hi, so we're going to talk about number 6 on 2013 BC FRQ. The question gives you the series such, and if it's firstly seeing it, you should recognize that it's very similar to either a cosine series or a sine series. Now we look at the first problem. It asks you to find the first derivative at x equals 0 and then the second derivative, and then asks you whether it was the local minimum, local maximum, or either at that point. So these problems, sometimes they would lead you on a certain path. So one part of it might be the, the process of solving for the second part. So it's important to you know find the relationship between what the first part asks and what the second part asks, so you know what you're looking for. So when we first look at this series, you know that it's a Maclaurin series because it's x by itself instead of say, x subtract by some number, say one. And thus we know that this a is equal to zero, which is the one we're looking for. We know that the series has to be in the form of f to the nth derivative at a over n factorial and x to the nth power. However, in this case, we can see that you know, the power and the factorial is slightly off, but that extra number, say in this case, instead of two factorial, it's three factorial, that extra three is thus the derivative so now if we look at the first derivative, it's always going to be the coefficient of the x term to the nth like first power. Because if you think about it, you're taking the derivative, and if you take the first derivative, that x is going to go away, and what's in front of it, it's going to be left as its derivative. And in this series, there is no term where it is the x to the first power. That means it's a zero. So the first derivative at point zero is zero. Now the second derivative, which we look at the coefficient of the x squared term. Now, this is what we have for x squared in the series. And this is this form that we have and we know. And that basically is negative one third off. Always remember to take into account the negative. However, you don't really have to calculate this to get the answer because you know that uh, the coefficient is gonna be negative no matter what, because there's a negative F sign up front. And with this form, anything other than the derivative couldn't have given it the negative sign. Now gonna come to the final step, obviously giving the reasons. And when you're reading, always remember to look for the details and exactly what they're asking for. So your explanation is to look something like this. You should just say that what the answer is, which in this case is maximum, because there's a critical point and it is concave down so and also you have to give that the first derivative is equal to zero and the second derivative is smaller than zero now let's look at part b it gives you the approximate of the sum of the series and asks you to show that um, the error is less than one one hundredth because there's a negative one to the nth power in the series we know that it's an alternating series and f for alternating series we always know that the error is the next term to which you stop your approximation at. And in this case, the next term from the end of the approximation is this term. And we are looking for it at one. So we just plug one into X and we find the error is one over 120, which is going to be smaller than one one hundredth. It's always good to convert them into the same thing. So instead of saying like, if ha it had given you 0.01, convert it to 1 one hundredth because you're getting a fraction most of the time. And so when you're comparing fractions, it's easier to have a, a straightforward result. So, you know, like a bigger denominator means it's gonna be a smaller rather than comparing a fraction with a decimal, which is less straightforward. And remember that the error is always gonna be the absolute value. So in this case, it's positive. So we don't need the absolute value sign, but if it was a negative, the error would still be a positive error. So let's now look at part C. So number C gives you a differential equation and asks you to show that our series is a solution to that differential equation. You see that our Y that was given is in the equation. So whenever we see something we're given in something else, we can always think about plugging it in, which is something I mentioned in part A. You always have to think about how you can relate what you're given and what you're looking for. 
So there's a y primed in here. We know we can take the derivative d dx of our series, which I did here. So it's a simple power series since you're taking it in terms of x. Just take the exponent that was 2x down and then subtract one from that. You can always think of it as uh, individual components of the series as the answer key does. But I like to think of it as an entire relation because you can manipulate it and it will affect every single term of the component and it's easier to find patterns among a series when you're putting it in terms of you know the whole summation rather than integral to compound because you know you're already presented it with a relation among the different components but it's just personal preference so now we t we know how to plug x in we just we have an x in every single component of the series so we just add one x to every single one so thus we have two n and we just put y in here and now we have two summations and even if you're in the process of doing something always as i have said look for the relation between what you're given or what you have right now and what you need to find so we know we have to find the cosine which can be a single summation and but we have two so we can think of ways to combine the two now we no notice the similar terms among the two summations so we can combine the two and take out two n and one from each and now very nicely we have two n up plus one up top and a two n plus one factorial which the last term of the factorial cancels out with this term and we're given or we're left with two n factorial and from the trig identities we know that this summation is basically cosine and we're left with an equal that holds true now there's an alternative way to think of it uh so when we gave in uh, this summation as i mentioned earlier we can recognize that it's a sign and always think about the relationship between given and uh what you're asked for so sine and cosine we can think about the possible connections between sine and cosine we know that it could be a derivative relationship and now we see a product rule which is key to connecting the sine and the cosine part of it so we just simply find x y in which we know that the derivative of that is a product rule which we will have be given that so x times y y substituting our series in will give us this which is the exact same thing as the series for sine x and now that we know that that is equal to the derivative of this so we just and we know this is equal to sine so we know that derivative of sine x is equal to cosine x is and thus the relationship which is given is held true and when you're doing this it's easier to jump steps but every single connection you make should be presented on your paper it helps you think and it helps you know your grader and see what you're doing another problem you could look at to get extra practice for this kind of problem is 2015 number six as well as 2016 number six these are two more recent effort cues that test your flexible application of these knowledge that you have learned on the power series. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching and good luck studying.